Welcome to Energy Quest. Mr. Max Millen Quating of WIPA is here with us today to talk more on renewables. So, Quating, you're welcome. Thank you, Leslie. Okay, so uh, we have something quite different to discuss today. I think, I think commonly we have, when we are talking about renewables, we hear more just of solar, of, I mean, the more common ends. And today we're talking about floating solar. Pretty different. What, by the, what do we really mean when we talk of floating solar? Well, um, the narrative of solar has been of great dis I mean, discussion, especially within Assam region. And um, the focus somehow has been, I mean, has been out of a lot of, I mean, mixed feelings. But um, we are different deployment when it comes to solar. Okay. We have solar within the CNI space, that is a commercial and industrial uh, space. We have C uh, solar within the domestic, that is the ones we have in our houses. Okay. And we have solar also for utility scale deployment. When it comes to the utility scale deployment, you realize that um, the land use per megawatt. I mean, the conventional uh, rule of thumb has been one megawatt for each one megawatt utility scale. We are using a land space of about four acres okay. because the sizes of panel um, when um, this convention was made was very big but smaller wattage in terms of capacity. And so, the, I mean, the environmentalists were having a lot of um, concerns with use of arable land, and yeah. we talk about use of arable really land too much. exactly. So, um, they, they always say that we are defeating the very purpose of um, making the noise about solar, and that is we are conserving the environment, we are helping the environment, and all that. But we are still using land analyze that would have been used for agriculture, mm -hmm. which is also for human sustenance. Yeah. And so there was a focus on seeing the deployment of solar other than the land. Mm -hmm. um, the focus was from arable land to non-arable land. Mm -hmm. And also there was a test as to where else can you deploy apart from the rooftop or apart from a carport. Mm -hmm. And so there was a test as to deploying the panels on the surface of water bodies. Wow. Um, looking at, and that was um, done with a lot of consideration into the water dynamics. If you're having uh, a flowing river, will it be good to have that investment? It's more like putting money mm -hmm. on the flowing river <laughs> for it to go. <laughs> so now we need to study the water dynamics as to how stable it is, as to the movement as to how it would be able to carry um, the panels. And so when we talk about inflating solar, it is just putting solar panels mm -hmm. on an open, unused um, water. water surface. And um, at the moment, the focus has been, or what is viable, has been on water reservoirs. And when we talk about water with the breast, uh, water um, that is stored behind a dam uh, for either hydropower or water that is um, stored behind a dam for water treatment. This uh, is really not moving. Which, is really, which has a very good dynamics for the, um, to hold the, um, the solar panels. And so it's essentially deploying the solar panels on a stable um, reservoir water surface that you can um, add weather and salaries for it to generate um, floating float, I mean, the, the, the power mm -hmm. from the sun. It's, it's, it sounds, I mean, that's interesting technology, but how common is this? Well, because of the risk of um, deploying such an investment, it's been deployed in various quantities, various smaller quantities across the globe, even in Africa. Um, I think it started up there um, in North Africa. I mean, other countries in the um, East also deployed okay. some. But at the moment, uh, some are actually 
testing the its deployment in megawatt capacity. And um, at the moment, um, in Ghana, there is a deployment of, I think, the biggest uh, floating solar in Africa because wow. it has a, a capacity of five megawatt, and that is very huge. The biggest across Africa? Yes. There are mm -hmm. under 100 kilowatts. Um, mm -hmm. They are close to a megawatt, but uh, the Bupi Authority, that's an agency of the government under the Ministry of Energy, um, piloted the one megawatt capacity and upon its successful deployment, and added on. everything added on an additional four megawatts mm -hmm. to see um, oh, okay. um, the viability of that. Um, I mean, technology. Wow, wow. So that, that, that's in Ghana now um, gives power to which part of the country? Okay, so if you look at, I'll first address the capacity. So if you look at the forecasted demand for Banda district, for example, okay. that is the district where Nipa uh, is sited. In fact, Nipa is sited between two districts, the Banda and the Bali district. Okay. If you look at the Energy Commission's um, projected electricity demand for the 2020 2021, for the Banda district, we are looking at a total of about 5.6 gigawatt, that is for Banda. Okay. For Bali, is about eight gigawatt hours. Mm -hmm. So that is the, the demand, the forecast of demand that um, Energy Commission was looking at deploying uh, electricity to these two districts. Banda is 5.6, is almost about six. Okay. And um, Bolo is eight, eight gigawatt. The output from this um, five megawatt, yeah. the annual output is about 7.4 uh, gigawatt oh, wow. hours. So just this five megawatt, five megawatt is able to Cover. supply the total demand for fully for Banda mm -hmm. and almost mm -hmm. fully for mm -hmm. a year yeah. for, for Bonle. Mm -hmm. So that's about 12,500 households or 13,000 households. And so the output from such um, disruptive technology, if I should call it that, yeah. is very significant. And uh, there's a peculiarity with uh, the, um, the solar, mm -hmm. sorry, the floating solar. And the reason behind that is the water surface has a very high albedo. Mm -hmm effects and when i talk about albedo effect it is a reflectance index of the river surface okay and so usually the deployment of the floating sonar the the panels that are preferred for our bifacial models mm -hmm. and when we talk about bifacial models they are models that are able to generate up and also down so you have oh both ways you have both ways okay depending on the ref reflectance of the so i mean we all know that from up there so should be directly the sun exactly the panel right exactly mm -hmm. but then by facial models have um some uh, translucence in them and so you get rays penetrating to the mm -hmm. water surface and it reflects back, back. Okay. and so if you have um, a surface that is below with a very high albedo effect, yeah. you turn around to get other mm. generation below ah, the PV models. Just in technology. But, okay, so another very important thing that we would care as everyday people, the cost per kilowatt, is it lower or higher comparatively? What's, what's the cost? So the economics with um, the floating in terms of the the capex, that is the capital expenditure. In terms of the capex, the it is slightly expensive than the normal ground mount. Okay. The reason is that um, you have you have to anchor these floaters, and these floaters 
and the, the floor plan that is um, the, the material that the panels sit on and rest on, mm -hmm. so that it doesn't submerge. Go down here. So you need to anchor very well the floaters okay. and the, 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 the structures, the mounting structures that the PV models will rest on. Mm -hmm. And that anchorage, you need to get experts, you need to get divers. Okay. So the development of it, so that's when I say the, the key things, the capital experience, in terms of the construction. Exactly. But then, the other part is that you get um, extra generation, you get about 15 to 20 extra more generation. This is a double. Yeah, because you have a bifacial model. Mm -hmm. And so that increases your output. Mm -hmm. And so, if you are calculating the cost of energy or the lowest cost of energy for the project yeah. life lifetime, you realize that you are somehow compensated with that extra the extra, extra energy, energy, yeah. energy that you get from the mm -hmm. floating. And so, in terms of the output, mm -hmm. it is almost at par with the ground mount. Mm. Yes, it almost at par with the ground mount in terms of the cost of So it makes up for the extra expense. Exactly. And also, you, you don't expect to uh, relatively the OPEX, the, 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 the conversation with the OPEX that's operating expenditure. Mm -hmm. um, however, some get you with this, you, you foresee that it is very risky, but somehow not so much expensive. Okay. Not so much expensive than the ground mount. Because um, other impacts that may otherwise cause um, defects in the mm -hmm. other ancillaries like the cable, yeah. the structures and all that, you might not really have it because you don't have a lot of... Um, this one is on the other item is coming on, yes. So you just um, have an expectation of a new OPEX. It is a new technology. A lot of the studies, it's difficult to cite authorities to support them. Okay. And so um, at this stage, it is still in the learning stage. But how long has Ghana has had this? Okay, so the first one megawatt was in 2021. Okay. Yeah, the first one, okay. like that, uh, but it was commissioned, um, I mean, it started getting to the grid in 2022. And now, the five megawatt is operational and connected mm -hmm. to the grid. Wow. Yes. No, but I, I think Bruce is doing amazing because there's so much talk on the renewables and yes. less work happening. So for we to achieve this and even standards in Africa, I think your team is doing well. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank, you. thank you. But um, does it have any effects on the lo local people there? Because wherever you find water bodies and all that, there may be livelihoods from there. Either they may be fishing, maybe there can be transport across there, all that. So what, what has been the effect of this on the people there? Okay, so I'm saying there are positives and there are negatives. The positives include um the panels covering the water surface or the the uh, i mean the river surface yeah. decreases evaporation because um the the that surface that has been covered was otherwise exposed to the sun yeah. and so you have this minimal evaporation right. but now you still have i mean the the place being covered mm -hmm. some of the positives with the whole aquatic ecosystem, mm -hmm. you realize that there is, uh, it decreases algae formation. And, you know, algae formation um, tends to decrease the biodiversity of the aquatic yeah. ecosystem. Mm -hmm. well, during construction, we observed something. And as I said, um, we don't have a lot of authorities to... Um, um, make certain new. claims because it's new, so it is still under study. But we realized that each morning, when the team was doing the installation, I mean, goes to the site to continue with the installation, we see a lot of the fishes around the materials. So oh. the assumption was that they were either it's taking shade under it, and for those, the, the community that 
knew about the fish farm. I mean, they, I mean, some of them reported uh, the eggs, the eggs of the fish, the fish eggs, yeah, under the material. Mm. Yes, yeah, so um, we 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 foresee that it will increase the livelihood of these fishes, but, but that has to doesn't be doesn't have to destroy them in any way. Not at all. Doesn't have any say. Okay. Not at all. Um, once the once there's an observation to see that um, these fishes were laying their eggs under the mm -hmm. materials, we mm -hmm. are very confident that before they start going extinct. Exactly, and um, that place has um, unique um, um, fishes. I mean, fishes that need oh, to be conserved. Wow. Yes, yeah, so uh, we are still looking at the performance with respect to the, that ecosystem to mm -hmm. see some of the benefits. So some of the the they but take, are they, they allowed to fish there? No, no, on the reservoir, no, on the reservoir, no, because um, the reservoir goes to, I mean, um, it's part of the upstream of the dam. Mm -hmm. And so it's not safe. Because, so you should go um, fishing. At the time that you are, I mean, the dam is working, there's a lot of drawdown towards the dam. But in, in building that, did we make um, as any allocation or reserve any kind of opportunity for them? Maybe the people who were fishing before in the area where you're counting it on safe to fish, have you given them new livelihoods? Have you, yes, has anything like that been done? Yes, yeah, so there's a whole program by the authority that um, there's a whole unit oh. looking at that, and that is the, uh, we call them the PAP. PAP. The um, um, People affected um, um, persons, yes. Okay. Uh, so there's, there's a whole unit that looks at the um, the community that was affected by yeah. the um, the construction and the operation mm -hmm. of the dam. Yeah, so project project affected persons, yeah, the project affected persons. And so they have different livelihoods, but there's a whole catchment area that um, they are not allowed to go for their own safety. Oh, okay. Yes. okay. Yes. So Maria, crazy. Yeah, yeah, yes, because for their own safety, you might end up going through the hmm. turbines or going through the okay. press. Anything, you know, anything can happen. Exactly. You take responsibility. Yes, so it. there is um, a demarcated area beyond which you can still do your activities.